how the hell do you screw up Tetris? This is a game that can run on everything from a calculator to a skyscraper, but during the launch of Tetris Ultimate for the PS4, this game brought next-gen consoles to their knees. Tetris's buggy launch was the capstone to a year of buggy releases. It's not uncommon for AAA games to have issues shortly after releasing, but when something as tame as Tetris exhibits the same kind of disregard for stability and performance as something like Assassin's Creed Unity, then it might be fair to assume that these games are facing some serious management problems. Stories of bad matchmaking, failed preloads, low frame rates, and kicked game sessions were breaking over and over again last year. It was a crisis. A great glitch crisis. And one of the most notable examples began a year earlier. Battlefield 4 launched in October 2013 with severe netcode issues that created matches where it wasn't uncommon to get shot around corners by players who were supposed to be dead. These problems persisted late into this year, with a series of frequent netcode patches that didn't begin rolling out until June of 2014, and kept rolling out until September. Back in spring, Watch Dogs came out, and during my first couple days with it, my guy would fall through the earth and get stuck. In October, Wasteland 2 came out, and the second half featured a bunch of broken quests and failing script triggers, even though I loved the game anyway. In November, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare released with peer-to-peer -peer netcode on PC, leading to frequent lag spikes, disconnected matches, and long wait times in lobbies. One of the multiplayer maps was completely unoptimized, as was the multiplayer tech in general. On consoles, PS4 preloads weren't working, and the day one patch on Xbox One broke the install functionality. Shortly after, we saw the release of the Master Chief Collection, and then saw a lot of reports of people unable to join any online matches at all, at least when the matches themselves wouldn't load with broken rules or unbalanced teams. Assassin's Creed Unity took things to the next level. These nightmarish images of faceless characters became representative of everything that went wrong with this game, if not this year. On top of looking like they were from Mars attacks, characters would fall through the ground, get stuck in geometry, and clip through buildings. Far Cry 4 gave me a black screen crash when booting, until I disabled my USB devices for some reason. Besides a noticeable stutter while driving, the game ran mostly fine for me. Around the same time, a lot of people were reporting the exact opposite for the Xbox Xbox 360 port of San Andreas, where some missions would hardlock consoles, along with having broken scripting, audio glitches, and corrupt save games. In December, Dragon Age Inquisition launched mostly without a hitch, until players discovered a bug across all systems that prevented dialogue between party members. The crew frequently crashed and dropped me to the main menu while I was playing with friends. Little Big Planet 3 didn't make it out unscathed either, with lots of players reporting game-breaking glitches there and finally, the 17th of December saw the rocky release of Tetris Ultimate. In that game's case, low frame rates and massive input lag were issues triggered by having a large friends list on the PS4 version. Users were recommended to disconnect their internet before playing, even though the IGN coverage still mentions having these issues while playing offline. I mean, it could be now, but we, on, on debug, oh, which wasn't even point, connected to point. the internet, uh, it was having these identical problems. This could mean two things. Either the developers did not test their game on consoles that had thousands of dummy accounts friended, or they knew about it and just decided to ship it anyway. Here's a useful term. In QA, a known shippable refers to a bug the developers are aware of, but do not consider high priority enough to fix. I have a feeling that this term might have been showing up on a lot of memos last year. 2014 really gave us a perfect storm of conditions for this to happen. The unfamiliar architecture of new consoles and the ability to patch games after launch lets developers get away with releases they couldn't have 10 years ago. And so does the mainstream consumer's insatiable yearly appetite for cutting-edge games. It's a trend fueled by a stranglehold on reviews that makes consumer conditions hard to replicate and publication times unhelpful. Polygon reviewed Battlefield 4 at a small, closed, publisher-sponsored review event. IGN did the same with Halo. Without having their online services hit by millions of users, the games played at these review events cannot reflect the experience consumers are going to get. It makes gauging consumer interests as difficult as gauging the quality of their experience. In fact, a joystick editorial damning the state of Halo's multiplayer was written by a reviewer who gave it a near-perfect score. 
And that's assuming a timely review comes out at all. Ubisoft embargoed reviews of Assassin's Creed Unity until the noon after launch day. The crew was not sent out to reviewers at all until just a day before launch, under the explanation that the game cannot be fully assessed without playing it with thousands and thousands of other players. Even though, once you're in the game, you actually have little to no interactivity with those players. Instead, the crew wants to corral you into small handfuls of two or three friends. And it crashed for me. A lot. I think they knew. I think the cause behind those crashes was a known shippable. I put out a call to game testers who might be able to tell me just what the hell is going on here. I got at least one good response from a developer, and they said the problem likely has more to do with development schedules rather than their bug testing budget. More dev time means less QA time, which means less bugs for testers to find and report. They told me management's focus on deadlines is what's to blame here, and that's a sentiment shared by the AAA developer veterans Brian Fargo, Clinton Keith, and Keith Fuller in this Gamma Sutra interview feature, which sums up the problem nicely with this graphic. Glitchy games are, more often than not, the result of a vicious cycle where shareholders pressure businesses to improve by enforcing unreasonable goals. The rising costs of game development perpetuates this cycle, which is enabled by consumers who just keep buying this stuff. Keith Fuller tells us Black Ops was almost entirely unplayable just a few months before launch, but that didn't stop it from being the highest selling entertainment launch of its day. Watch Dogs became Ubisoft's best selling new IP. The Master Chief Collection and Assassin's Creed Unity were both some of the top 10 highest selling games for November. I don't exactly know what it will take to encourage people to wait a few weeks to hear about a game's launch before buying into it. A lot of these games don't even get super great review scores. Even taking a hit in the stock market isn't enough. Ubisoft's price went down 9% after the Unity fiasco, but about a month later, it's back to rising as normal. People are still demanding these annual releases. People want to see an Assassin's Creed game every year. People want to see a uh, Call of Duty every year. People want to see these things coming out every single fall so they have something to buy their kids, they have something to play on the systems. So if we keep demanding these annual releases, we're going to see these problems continue. I'm being told to expect this problem to only get worse. Maybe the only thing that can fix this is a fundamental change in consumer culture that sees buyers losing enough consumer confidence or becoming savvy enough to no longer buy these big games at launch. And maybe the only way to make that happen is to burn them as bad as last year's glitchy games did. In my Watch Dogs review, I said to never, ever, ever buy a AAA PC game on launch. And just six months later, it seems like that advice can now apply to AAA console games. But what I'm really scared of is the day when that advice can apply to something like Tetris.